Billionaire Amazon founder Jeff Bezos has just made his first investment in a Southeast Asian e-commerce startup. It was incredibly fortunate and a huge fanboy moment for me. But it's not in one of the region's billion dollar unicorns. It's a mom and pop shop startup that's been around for less than two years. If I look at last month's numbers, we've grown more than 200 times. And it just so happens that some of the founders are Bezos's former employees. I wrote a memo, which is a very Amazon style thing to do. You don't send a deck, you send a, a written note. Wow, so taking a leaf out of the leadership book from Jeff Bezos seems to have paid dividends It's there. inspirational. Indonesian e-commerce startup Ula is a wholesale marketplace aiming to modernize the country's millions of mom-and-pop kiosks, or borangs, by providing inventory and logistics services, as well as financing. Founded in January 2020 by CEO Nippon Mera, the company has thrived under a pandemic-induced shift to digital, so far raising over $117 million in funding from big names like Tencent and Lightspeed Venture Partners. One among them is Bezos Expeditions, whose billionaire owner was told about Ula by one of the startup's early backers. In a region where Amazon has limited presence, Jeff Bezos' investment of an undisclosed sum via his family office can be seen as a vote of confidence. Nippon previously worked at Boston Consulting Group, an Indian e-commerce giant Flipkart, but he started his career as a software engineer at Amazon in 2004. And if you had asked me at that time that there would be a day, you know, 15 years later, where this moment would come, I would have probably just been like, it's a dream. Despite never meeting Bezos, Nippon yearned to be an entrepreneur just like him. It was during his time as an investor at Sequoia India when he saw an opportunity to adapt the traditional business-to-consumer e-commerce model for a new market, small food kiosks in Indonesia. The B2C angle, the, the typical Amazon, Flipkart, or here in Southeast Asia, we have Shopee, Lazada, Tokopedia, and so on, it has been more on the non-food side primarily. Foods is a very different way of running things. Usually in emerging economies, their income profile is such that they have to buy frequently and in small baskets. Right? And the moment you get into that dynamic, the traditional way of doing e-commerce doesn't work because you can't deliver a three, four, five dollar basket to somebody's home and do it profitably and sustainably. So you have to find other ways of doing it. Indonesia, with its vast population and fast growing economy, is seen as a huge opportunity for entrepreneurs and investors. Central to that are the country's millions of neighborhood kiosks, which sell fast moving consumer goods like drinks and packaged food, as well as household items. They're an integral part of society, especially in the smaller cities and provinces outside the capital Jakarta, accounting for almost three quarters of the country's $47 billion consumer goods sales. Many rely on traditional means of replenishing their supplies by shuttering their stores when they visit wholesalers to stock up wares. Abhi Kanand, a managing director at Sequoia India, one of Ula's investors, explained more. They are essentially run by one or two people who act like consumers, they own the business, they need to procure things for themselves to sell. And for them to actually tap into offline supply chains is actually very inefficient. They have to go to the local market, spend hours trying to figure out what to buy, where to buy it from. Nippon wanted to simplify that process by creating a business-to-business -business platform that would enable storeholders to order stock at competitive rates and have it delivered to their store for a small fee. So, he called on his contacts in the e-commerce space to help him realize the vision. His former colleague from Amazon, Alan Wong, Ricky Tangara from Lazada, and Procter & Gamble executive, Derry Sakti, rounded out the founding team. The traditional store owner, they're on YouTube, they're on TikTok, they're spending time on WhatsApp, they're digital, they're more digital than many of us. So how do we bring that advantage and say, okay, we've learned all this stuff in Amazon, we've learned all this stuff in business school. How do we bring some of that into this little smartphone that will help them both make more money as well as save more money? The business got off to a steady start, but within months of launching in January 2020, the pandemic hit, making demand for services like Ula more urgent. Lockdowns made it harder for stallholders to source goods from wholesalers, even as customer demand for daily essentials grew. That caused many mom-and-pop shops to pile onto the platform, 
the need in the market just completely switched. In lockdown, your first priority is to get your food, is to get things that you consume. The founders responded quickly, onboarding tens of thousands of stallholders and expanding their team of 15 to 400 across Indonesia, Singapore and India. That rapid growth caught the eye of investors, helping them to attract their first round of investment within six months. To Nippon's credit, I think, you know, he's been able to get a lot of momentum very early. And, you know, clearly a lot of other investors are seeing that. The most exciting addition to, to the company is Jeff Bezos, who's invested, which is obviously, you know, nice validation for the business. But there are a number of other, you know, really, really smart people who have joined us along the way. To date, Southeast Asia is home to $35 billion startups of which three quarters are from Indonesia and Singapore. Of them, 26% are in the financial technology sector, 20% are in e-commerce, and 11% are in logistics. In October 2021, ULA closed its Series B round, raising $87 million. Nippon says the cash will go towards expanding its existing marketplace offering, as well as launching a so-called buy now, pay later service to provide stallholders with small loans. What is to come is what we call the working capital problem. That's something which we are building. Working capital sort of helps you expand how much you can keep in your store and therefore you will not run out when a customer needs something. The foundations are there, the customers want the service. Uh, what we need to do now is sort of continue to build on it. Within the next 18 months, Nippon hopes to quadruple the number of merchants Ula works with, from 70,000 today to 300,000. He also hopes to help merchants expand into new categories, such as apparel and technology, with the ultimate goal of doubling their income. Why restrict yourself to the items that are in your store? Why can't you order everything that your customer needs? Why can't you be that channel? Right? And those are tougher problems to solve and will take longer. But in my mind, that is what will lead to a new form of retail. Not something which we've seen in the US, not something which we've seen in China. It'll be an Indonesia-specific, unique solution. It's a bold goal for any entrepreneur, let alone one building in the midst of a pandemic. There will always be uncertainty in life. There will always be risk in life. You just have to say, I'm going to try this yeah. and I will deal with whatever comes. And I'm sure if you'd known that a pandemic was a few months around the corner, you might not have started this That's time. That's true too. That is true too. So in that sense, the timing was perfect. <laughs> yeah. Perfectly bad, but Perfectly it seems bad. to have worked right. out.